I can still clearly remember the time. It was quarter past four in the afternoon. Um, because I can still see the clock um, on the wall of the casualty department. It was Christmas Eve, um, 1986. Um, and I had no idea what my future would hold. It was a very scary time. It was a very painful time. Um, it was a very helpless time because there wasn't that much that we could do about HIV. And so for many, there was a sense of fear and isolation and activism, I think, was our form of treatment. We were driven by passion. We were driven by this sense of urgency that what have we got to lose? And we had to be at the table and we had to see the change. So by the time the antiretrovirals became available, it wasn't a question of if we are going to get the treatment, but when. It's been a difficult journey from my city for count being three in 2003 and four. And now it's 1,238 and my viral load is undetectable. I've seen ARVs working. I'm living proof that they're working. I've been working in HIV research since about 2000. And the gains that we've seen in HIV treatment have been beyond our wildest dreams. That we've been able to rescue people who were just about dead and help them to go back to work. But we haven't really made much impact in the incidence of disease, the number of new people becoming infected every day. So about four years ago we were approached to perform the study which looks at giving antiretroviral therapy to a couple, one of whom is HIV infected and one who is not. I always knew it would work, but never in my wildest dreams did I think that the results would be this dramatic. A study that reduces HIV transmission by 96% is historic. This is the most important prevention tool we have ever had. We could end AIDS within a generation. We could end AIDS within a generation. But we need your help. We need your help. We need your help. We need your help. We could end AIDS within a generation. But we need your help. <laughs>